All right, so now you're ready to start um, your actual, the actual um, landscape painting. Okay, so here's, here's the example I'm working from. Now, I'm not putting the woman and the dog in this picture. Um, I'm focusing on the mountains. I like that there were some mountains with some snow in the back and then some green mountains. And then um, I've got some evergreen trees and then the little creek and some flowers, okay? So that's gonna be the main focus. So what I do first is I super lightly sketch out just the main areas. So I kind of um, sketched in the line of the mountains, kind of the contour. I kind of found the line where the mountains start to meet um, the, the flatter land. And then I, I quickly popped in just a little bit of the creek or the stream, whatever that, the water, body of water is. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do first. Um, and there's a couple different methods to do this, and some people prefer to do this, some people don't. Um, but I am going to initially um, mix up a teeny bit of green, and I'm going to put a really thin layer of green. This is like a limey green. Really all I'm doing is I'm just giving this an undertone um, of where my mountains are going to be. Is this the color I want my mountains to actually be? No. But I'm giving them a little undertone of this limey green. And it's also kind of letting me, you know, just a reminder where my sky is going to be. Okay, so I kind of got that laid in there. Okay, perfect. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash my brush out really well. Sorry, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to work on the sky. Now the sky in my picture is a very like pale blue, kind of a gray blue. Um, uh, I, might, I might intensify my sky a little bit. Mm, so here's what I'm going to do first. Kind of like what we did with the practice one. Um, I'm going to load up. So I'm going to start with white because I want my sky to be a little lighter than the one we did in the practice. And remember, you, gotta, you have to work in layers. Um, we use acrylic that is a little bit thin. It's not a heavy bodied acrylic. So it's a little on the thin side. Um, so the pigment's not as strong. Also, just in general with acrylics, you have to work in layers. So I put a nice uh, layer of white there. You can't really see it. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add some blue. So I'm just streaking some blue in. I'm starting like, oh. Apparently there was some glitter on my desk. Got a little glitter in my picture. I'm streaking in some blue. I'm gonna keep it. I, I kind of want to keep it light. I want it to make. I want it to look kind of um, like a daytime sky. So I'm just streaking in some blues because I put that base of white down first. The blue streaks in pretty smoothly, and it's okay if you um, smear over your your mountains a little bit. Not a big deal. Because remember those were just kind of. You know, placeholders. Don't use too much. I mean, you can use water. Just don't use too much water because when you do, um, it tends to thin out this acrylic even more. Remember, I put uh, something in the in the acrylic to make it flow a little better, make it a little um, dry, a little slower, and and um, and. and paint a little smoother, but when I did that, it also kind of makes the paint a little more transparent, so you don't really need to add water. Okay, so I'm coming in here. I'm choosing to make my sky a little bit of a deeper blue near the mountains. I remember, it's okay if I paint over the mountains because those were just kind of placeholders. Okay, I'm coming in with a little light. So notice I'm just building up. I'm going back and forth. Also notice I'm using a bigger brush. Don't use a tiny brush. Um, use the right tool for the job and a bigger brush because you're painting sky. Sky is big. So I'm just working back and forth, layering, layering until I get that sky the way that I would like it. Kind of coming in here. And I know some of you like to watch those Bob Ross videos. It's fine. 
he works really fast. Um, but also remember, he's like a machine. He's done this a million trillion times. So he can go really fast because he has a routine down. Um, we're working on our routine, so we can't go that fast, okay? So it's okay that this takes time. Don't try to compare yourself to Bob Ross. All right. I know it's tricky to see on the camera. My, um, it has a terrible glare, but you can, I think you can see my, my sky. Okay, awesome. Now here's the deal. I would normally, I, I know you're trying to work a little fast. Uh, normally I would let the sky dry a teeny bit before I would dive into those mountains. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do, sorry. I smeared a little green in there. I'm trying to like fix that. All right, um, and I might retouch that later. I don't know that I love it, but eh, it's there. I might go back to it later. Okay, so because, oh, I guess they're pretty dry. So now what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna work my way down this painting. So I'm gonna work on the background. Sorry, I'm just trying to wash off my brush. Okay, so um, in my reference photo, the mountains um, in the back here, are kind of like a snow-capped mountain, so they're a little more rocky. And then the mountains here are more of, um, uh, they have trees and stuff on them, and dirt, or sand, whatever. So they're a little more green and brown, okay? So back here, I'm going to um, stick with some muted, like, grays, browns, and blues. Also, that's called atmospheric perspective. So things that are farther away from us look very dull in color. Um, so when we look at my photograph, we see very few details and it's very dull in color but compared to the bright green that we see here close up, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do, um, and I'll show you, those of you that are doing mountains, I'll show you how to use a palette knife. Today, I'm just gonna use a, um, a regular old paintbrush because it works just as well, but I'm gonna mix up um, kind of a, a I'm gonna go with like this like grayish brown here. It's like a blue grayish brown. Okay. Now I'm gonna come in and you can see how that paint is still really transparent. And I'm going to get my mountains in. This is gonna take quite a few layers to get the mountains where I want them. Okay. Um, this is not a one shot deal on these because it's gonna take some layering. Um, these require some texture. Right now you don't really see too much texture going on with my, my mountains. And again, I know some of you are watching those Bob Ross videos and he gets texture pretty quick. Remember, he's a money-making machine. We are not. Okay, so I'm laying in the more um, more rocky kind of mountains up there. They're still super transparent, okay? Um, now I'm going to, you know, change the color a teeny bit. I'm gonna make it a little bit more green for this side. Then this mountain kind of comes down. Okay, so see how it's, it's still really thin. It's okay. This is still super thin. It's still transparent. That's okay, okay? You got it, it's, it this is a layered process. Okay. All right. That's how you get your background started. Obviously not all of you are doing mountains in your background, some of you, it, you know, everything varies. But my point being to this, your background starts first, you start your background first, take your time, it's gonna take some layers to get it in. Don't expect it to be a one class deal, you might have to retouch it a couple of times, okay? All right, um, so you continue to work on your background. After you have your background pretty much where you like it, then start to move to the middle ground. That's the middle part of your painting. 
you don't have to have every, you can still come back and retouch the background once you're working down here. Um, but in general, we work in the sections, background, middle ground, and then the bottom is the foreground, okay? All right, awesome.